pain in my body called Jesus. I don't know no better name to call than the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give them another hand. Amen. We greet you in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 It's good to be here again. Amen. Amen. And it's been hot these last few days. Folks complaining. Some of them said to me, we need some air. What y'all do when it was 1950, 1960, 1970? Amen. Amen. But it's good to see everybody. God bless you. Amen. As always, giving thanks to God who is the head of our life. Amen. And who leads us and guides us and all that we do. Thanking God for our deacons and our chairman and chair co-chair, our deaconess, chairperson, co-chair, the mothers of the church, and Sister Chanel, and the nurses, and Deacon Miss Debbie Jones, and the ushers, and Mother Stewart, and the education department, all those that work in the church, amen? Amen. amen. It's good to have somebody to say thank you every now and then, amen? Amen. amen. You know that we appreciate what you're doing. Don't y'all know most folks that work in the church are volunteers? Amen. And they're not getting paid for all this extracurricular activity. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's good to say thank you and we appreciate Amen. what you're doing. Amen. 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 So that's why leaders have been instructed that if you're going to say something to the volunteer, say something nice. Yeah. Amen. Don't be messing up and complaining and harping and talking bad to them. Amen. Because unless you're going to pick up the slack they're doing, you need to be quiet. Amen? Amen. amen. Y'all might as well say amen. 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 You can mess with me and I'm volunteering here. Amen. God bless you. And as always, I give thanks to God to my wife who continually stand at my side. We're going to go to Matthew the 11th chapter. All right. And I know I said the 28th verse, but we're going to read 28, 29, and 30. Y'all can read two more verses, can't you? Yeah. Y'all went to, you got some education. Matthew, the 11th chapter, 28 through the 30th verse. Amen. Stand for the reading of God's word for those that can. And when you have it, say amen. Amen. And I'm reading from the ESV version. Verse 28 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29, Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me. And did you see what it said? And learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy. And my burdens are light. Let us pray. Tell me, Father, we thank you when we bless you over again. Praise to your holy name. Father God, as we stand here basking in your glory, Lord, we ask that you hide me behind your cross in my stead. Leave your sweet Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my God, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Yes, and Lord, if someone may ask, what must I do to be saved? These words can be light into their pathway, where they can find a waiting door to go in and sup with you. Lord, we forever give you the praise, glory, and honor. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yes. let all God's people say, Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As the grass withers and the flower fades, the word of our God shall last forever. Think for a moment about the 
the various situations you have faced in your life. How was it? Did you deal with it with ease or was there some troubling along the way? Many people have to deal with things. In the movie, The Darkest Day, Prime Minister Winston Churchill has to deal with the trouble that is facing Great Britain at the time. This was the Nazi invasion. He, will warn, he warned Parliament for many years of the impending doom. He saw the trouble on the horizon, yet no one would listen to him. He was deeply troubled in his spirit. He had had several failures prior to this leading up to World War I. He led the disastrous campaign in Turkey. He bungled the defense of Norway. He respectfully underestimated the Japanese army. Yeah. But despite Churchill's many shortcomings and some flawed beliefs, he is considered a symbol of persistence. This mountain of a man struggled early in school before barely passing an exam to get into a private school. He was accepted into the military college on his third try. Churchill pulled insight in many of these instances. Churchill knew that much had to change in the world and that he had to show that no matter the trouble or the obstacle, Great Britain had to move from doing things to handling the trouble that was handling them. We're going to use for a title today, How to Handle What's Handling You. Right. Right. How to Handle What's Handling You. If you really look at things in your life, there's a problem you don't like. Right. Big or small, it's causing a situation. Right. Yeah, yeah. As we look at what's happening here, Jesus is looking at the resistance that's increasing against him at this time. He even had John the Baptist questioning whether he was the one to come. Right. The very nature of Jesus is not to be offensive to the worldly pride of many people. Yet for those who had intellectual sophistication that thought they could outsmart an almighty God, right. he showed them how to handle what's handling them. Yes, sir. Look at the implications of the significance of Jesus coming only by God's gracious gift. Right. Look at this, the claim of knowledge shared by Jesus and his Father to show a dying world that he is God. Right. How to handle what's handling you. When you read in verse 28, he said, come to me. Yeah. You ever seen where a mother call a child no matter what they age, she said, come here. And then the child acts like he ain't heard nothing. And then the mother repeats it over again. She said, didn't you hear me? I said, come here. Now, if you value your existence, you get in a straight line and you head toward mama. Amen? But today we have to learn how to handle the trouble that's handling us. Right. Do you even know you're in trouble? Is the first thing. All right. Last week we, we preached on get a grip. All right. And how do you get a grip? You, you start by praying to an awesome God. Now we're trying to get you to handle the situation that's handling you. Yeah. And let me explain something to y'all if, if nobody ever told it to you. Many of the problems in your life, you created them. Right. Did you hear what I said? Many of the problems in your life, you created them. If you didn't create them, you picked 
picked up somebody else's dirty laundry. And maybe your problem. Many of us want to live a peaceful life. We just want to get up in the morning, have a good day, eat our food, talk to the people we love, and then when we lay down, be happy and content. Right. Uh -huh. We're looking to get toes up to go to sleep. Amen? Right. But how do you handle a problem that's handling you? Trouble is something all people must go through. Amen. They must deal with it no matter what the outcome. Right. There are many troubles facing the church today, and these are catastrophic. Yes, sir. Many people are denying Christ in their life and their lifestyle. Right. There's an ignoring of the youth today. Complaining more than encouraging. Stop talking about the Bible, or stop taking the Bible seriously. Having values of personal preference over your soul's health. Point number one, trouble is inevitable. Trouble is inevitable. If you live long enough, you're going to have some trouble. My mama used to say, she said, child, if you live long enough, you'll understand it better by and by. She said, all your days ain't going to be good. You're going to have some sunshiny days and some dark nights. And here's the thing. People that come to Jesus Christ come to him with the misconception that all their problems are going to be talk, uh, taken care of. Like a genie in a bottle. Right. When it comes to trouble, you're either in trouble, just coming out of trouble, or heading into trouble. Right. It is given that we will all have trouble in our life. Felix Neff said, a Christian without affliction is like a soldier without a gun. You're going to have some trouble. Realize and understand that you can handle what's handling you. I'm, I'm telling you right now that in my short time of living, if somebody would have told me all the trouble I would have gone through, I would have found a way not to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Don't be worrying or fretting like there's no hope. When some people go through trouble in their life, they act like they ain't got no hope, no, no, no resolution for tomorrow. And you know how what happens when you try to fix your trouble in your life? You mess it up. When you say you're gonna give it to God, you ain't walked away from a prayer. You ain't walked away from the altar, not even three minutes before you pick it up and try to fix it all over again and mess it up worse. Everybody gonna go through some trouble. They try to run to people they think gonna help them. Let me tell you, friends are just surface helpers. They can only help you with what they see and what they're willing to deal with. You must have someone that's going to help you no matter what. People say that when people die, well, if you need anything, just give me a call. Yeah, yeah. Folks should really stop saying that unless they mean it. Amen? Amen. Because when somebody calls and you, they, they say, you told me to call you, you can't bag up the truck. <laughs> yeah. You got to get going. Amen? Because what you're doing is you're going to mess up somebody uh, that walk with God because you promised to be there when they called you. All right. All right. Now, trouble is inevitable. If you ain't going to have trouble on your God, you're going to have trouble in your home. You ain't got trouble in your home. You got trouble in your marriage. You ain't got trouble in your marriage. 
You got trouble with your kids. You ain't got trouble with your kids. You got trouble with you. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Sometimes we are our own person. Thinking everybody else messing us up. We messing ourselves up. Right. Just because you think it, don't make it right. Job 14 1 said that a man is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why God going to be uh, 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 good to you and not good to somebody else? Right. If the Bible says he reigns on the just and the unjust, but until you start accepting that you're in trouble, there's nothing you can do about the situation. Right, right, right. Yes. People get upset with God when God takes back what's his. Yes. He only loves them to us for a few days. So how are you going to get mad at God? Here's another thing. Look at what God has done for you while you are looking at the inevitability of your troubled days. I've seen a lot of people die lately. Yes, sir. But the day I went to see my brother on his deathbed, and I looked at him from the foot of his bed, and I just did one prayer so he wouldn't have another troubled day. I said, Lord, be kind to him and don't let him suffer. Amen. Right. I said, be kind. Because he was having some troubling days. <laughs> And I'd rather him go home to be with the Lord and stay on this side of the Jordan and have some more trouble days. Right. 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 Prayer hold people here. Yeah. Prayer will hold people here. Yes. Yes. Remember when my mama's husband was dying and everybody was praying and praying for a healing. Mama called them all up. She said, stop praying. Let them go and let God do what he's going to do. Right. And do you not know he went home to the Lord in peace after that? Not even 24 hours. Years ago, a woman who was with a little baby riding the stagecoach in western Montana. The weather was bitter and cold. And in spite of the driver's ability to get through the snow fastly, he noticed that the mother was becoming unconscious from the cold. And he kept looking back and looking back. Then finally, the stagecoach driver stopped the carriage, went into the compartment, took the baby, wrapped the baby up in some blankets. Then he grabbed the mother and pulled the mother out of the stagecoach, closed the door and got on top of the carriage and started driving away. But the mother, seeing the stagecoach drive off with her baby, got up and started running after the stagecoach. She started running so fast and so hard that she overtook the stagecoach. Finally, the stagecoach driver stopped, knowing that her running had brought her back to life and warmed her body up enough to take care of her child. The mother got in the stagecoach. At the end, the mother got out and told the stagecoach, thank you for helping me in my time of trouble. Sometimes we have to go through some things to get to the other side. All your days may not be good. But you see me standing here today, fit as I can be at this age. I'm not as fit as I was in my 20s and 30s. Fit with a head full of hair. Yeah. A six pack. I'm trading in for a bald head and a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> but I make 
you look good, though. <laughs> but I'm standing here fit today, but I can have some troubles on tomorrow. Point number two, take your troubles to the right person. Sometimes God is like the stagecoach driver. He will allow things to enter into our lives that nearly devastate us. But he does, does it so that we can grow in trusting him and him alone. Stop trusting what you can do and start trusting in an almighty God. See, if you realize what he said, he said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. That means all who are trying to do the best they can do, but got a lot of problems, a lot of weight on their shoulders. You're going to go through some things. But don't give up hope, because you can always come to Jesus. Oftentimes we know and say that Jesus is dead, but we do not take him up on his offer to hell. Right. Hebrews 4 and 14 says, let us hold fast to our profession of faith. Let us hold fast. Let us hold true to what we say. If we say we believe in God, let's act like it. Amen. Amen. Stop giving up so soon when trouble knocks on your door. Right. Let's stop giving up when it don't feel good no more. Let's stop giving up when we can't handle it no more. That's when you put on your big boy clothes, your big woman clothes, and guess what? You stand there and you tell trouble you can't ride with me no more. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I left everything. Brother, sister, cousin, mama, daddy, everybody. Yeah. I left them all over there. Why? Because I did what the Lord said. All right. And if you stop picking up unnecessary trouble along your way, God will show you a way out of nowhere. Yeah. Right. 2 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, There is no temptation that's common to man that God can't bring you out of, but with the temptation, make a way for you to escape. He's going to take whatever's bothering you and make a no way out of it, and then all you got to do is walk through and say, Look, I made it. But until you take it, to Jesus, yes. you're going to be carrying around a lot of unnecessary weight. Yes, man was weighing himself one day and he said, well, I, I think I lost some weight. He got on the scale and the scale read whatever it read. He said, oh, that must be 10 pounds of my clothes. That extra weight. <laughs> He said, I'm counting my shoes, my pants, my belt, my shirt, the change in my pocket, the wallet, everything. Scale on the tell was there, ain't it? The trouble with the man was he did not want to accept the reality of his situation. Do not pretend like you don't have problems. A lot of people come in and somebody say, how you doing? And they say, I'm highly favored and I'm blessed by the best. Uh -uh, no, I'm messed up. Okay? I, 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 I ain't doing good. Okay? No, no, no. And, it, and it's okay to tell folks, you know, when you're having a bad day. Because then they know that you are alone. Amen? 
And because you don't know what it took for somebody to come into this church today and you may be the last straw that breaks the camel back and you get everything that they had held up, tied up and put in a bag and now they're slapping you upside the head with it. Right. Right. 2 Corinthians 12 and 7 says, So keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of revelation. A thorn was given to me in the flesh. A messenger of Satan yeah. to harass me and to keep me from becoming conceited. Sometimes trouble comes to straighten you out. Okay. To get you back the way God wants you to be. We don't know what the, the thorn was that was afflicting Paul. But what we do know is that it was strong. And whatever it was, it was so sharp that it caused him pain. Because when you look at it, it said a sharp thorn. That means a sharp object that was able to pierce not only the top of him, but it got down inside of him that it caused him not only physical anguish, but mental anguish. And now he's trying to get rid of it spiritually. So he turns to God and he said, God, would you help me with my trouble? And he asked him not one time, not two times, but three times. And I like the answer that God gave him. Y'all might not like it, but I love it. He said, my grace is sufficient. Whatever you go going through, you can't handle it. But give it to me, and guess what? I'll be your burden bearer. I'll be your heavy load sharer. I'll be your will in the middle of a will. Give it to me and watch how far I Weary and burden reflects the daily labor of carrying a pack of ones on one's own back. Guess what? If you're going to follow Jesus, pick up your cross and follow him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't know what your problem is today. Yeah. And really, it ain't meant for me to know. Right. But the Bible says that whatever your problem is, He's a burden down. He can take care of your problem. If your problem is in your body, give it to Jesus. If your problem is in your mind, give it to Jesus. If you got child children going crazy, give them to Jesus. Husband ain't acting right, give them to Jesus. Wife ain't doing right, give her to Jesus. Whatever it is, give it to the right person. Amen. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to leave you alone. When Jesus was headed to the cross, he knew he was headed for trouble. He knew he was headed to, into trouble. He could have avoided the cross on the earthly side. But then there would have been no salvation. Yeah, yeah. He knew that what he was about to go through was not going to be comfortable or easy. All right. Church, stop looking for the easy way out. The only way you can start leaning and depending on an almighty God is to go through whatever is bothering you. Yeah. You got to walk your own way into God's gracious arms. You got to be willing to give everything to Him. Guess what? When your time comes and you got to give God whatever is, is bothering you, don't be an Indian giving and take it back. Give it all to Jesus and watch Him work a miracle in your life. I'm telling you, when we went to the doctor and the doctor told my wife she had cancer, we got to the doctor and the other doctor said, I don't know what y'all doing here, but I'm not finding no cancer. My wife said, you what? I don't see no cancer. My wife said, let's go. And she got out of there like she stole something. 
God all the way home. We went into trouble. God took trouble, knocked it out of, his, out of the way. And look, my wife's still here, and we still thank it and praise it and all.